Hello everyone. Let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Nazlı Ceylan and I'm from Turkey. I'm a full-time PhD student in Santishvan University, Doctoral School of Regional Sciences. Today, I want to make a short presentation about intra-industrial trade performance of Turkish grain sector against the European Union. My presentation is divided into six parts. First, I will try to highlight the importance of the subject, then give you some primary examples from the selected literature on this subject. In the third part, I will explain the methodology I used in my study. Then I will share my findings with you. In the last two sections, I will express my conclusive remarks and possible future research steps. First of all, I want to emphasize the importance of grain sector in Turkey as well as in the European Union. According to the Turkish Statistical Institute data, the country imported almost 6 million tons of wheat and exported 7.4 million tons of wheat, which is mostly processed products, in 2018. In the same period, maize import was 2.1 million tons, while the export of this product was noticeably low. And when it comes to the European Union, according to the International Grain Council data, the EU took the first place in world wheat production and fourth place in maize production. Therefore, considering these figures and also the EU being one of the major trading partners of Turkey, revealing the trade pattern of these two trade partners can be descriptive and guiding in determining future agricultural policies. And also, this analysis constitutes a part of my main research study on wheat value chains. Here I would like to give you some background information about intra-industrial trade and its application in some research studies. Intra-industrial trade is defined as mutual trade of similar types of products and it constitutes a significant part of international trade. It has been the subject of many scientific studies. For example, by using IIT approach, Kazmi and Faust analyzed NAFTA's effect on both inter-industry and inter-industry trade in agri-food products over the period of 1990 and 1995. Their study revealed that US-Canada bilateral trade has been increasingly more characterized by inter-industrial trade in the relevant period. Contrarily, Mexican bilateral trade with the both United States and Canada has been mostly between different industries. Fair to examine the link between factor endowment and vertical intra-industrial trade in agri-food products between Hungary and the EU. By applying three different approaches to assess IIT and using panel regression models, his study revealed that the IIT for agri-food products between Hungary and the EU had vertical nature. It was also found that there was a positive relationship between factor endowment and vertical IIT. Varma and Ramakrishnan assess the structure and the determinants of agri-food trade between India and the selected trade partners such as members of FTAs, Asian and the SAFTA. The analysis revealed that the nature of India's trade with selected partner countries was predominantly intra-industry. The methodology that was used in this study is the Grubel Lloyd Index, which is a commonly used method for measuring the level of intra industrial trade. Here you can see is the kind of ratio obtained from analyzed countries' export and import figures. As it can be seen from the formula that the GL ratio can take a value between 0 and 1. If a country only imports or only exports goods and services within the same sector, there is no intra-industrial trade, and the index takes the minimum value of zero. In other words, there are no products in the same class that are both imported and exported. In case of GL equal to 1 means there is only intra-industrial trade, no inter-industrial trade. Here in my research, intra-industrial trade was analyzed by using trade data at 4 and 2-digit HS system classification for the years from 2010 to 2019. 
Here in this slide you can see the table showing GL indices by product groups. The table presents the characteristics of Turkey's intra-industrial trade with the EU for cereals, oil seeds and milling products. GN indices were also measured by cereal subgroups like wheat, barley, maize and rice based on four-digit data, which were then aggregated to the two-digit level. Here the results show that the level of IIT varies significantly both by product and by year. For the cereal sector, there is a downward trend in long term. Values of GL indices seem relatively low, below 0.5, except for the year 2010. It's also interesting to note that the grain sector GL index is relatively high at the beginning of the analyzed period. However, for the last five years it seems considerably low. Here the figure provides long-term IIT trends by selected product groups. In the beginning of the relevant period, Turkey's wheat export to the EU were high and the imports were at similar levels which engendered a high intra-industrial trade ratio. The reason behind the EU's import increase can be attributed to Italy's wheat import in 2010, which constituted 83% of all the EU wheat imports from Turkey. Apart from 2010, the EU wheat import from Turkey has been less than 300,000 metric tons. Similarly, the peak on 2013 was related to Spain's maize import, which constituted 78% of all EU maize imports from Turkey in that year. Therefore, the long-term trend shows that Turkey is a net grain importer against EU. In general, the reason increased import was Turkish milling industry rather than domestic consumption. Due to the improving milling industry, Turkey's wheat imports consistently increased in the last decade. However, although imports from Europe were considerable, the Russian Federation, Kazakhstan and the Ukraine remained the main suppliers by the reason of freight and price advantages. According to the figure, the subject sectors also showed different trends for fluctuation, highlighting a more stable tendency for OEC sector. In the analyzed period, Romania was the main exporter for OECs to Turkey within EU countries. It's possible to say that in OEC sector, trade destinations shows that geographical conditions played less important role than price and supply availability. I would like to summarize the main points briefly. Estimates of the GL indices for grain sector trade between Turkey and the EU in the last decade range between 0.03 and 0.57. Regarding wheat and maize subgroups, the GL indices took place between 0 to 0.94 and 0 0.02 to 0 0.86 respectively. The downward trend proves that there is a low level intra-industrial trade. Trade imbalance in grain industry occurred related to the rise of Turkey's grain import from EU, while the country's export to EU was more stable. The pattern was different for OECs and milling sector trade, with GL indices varied between 0.07 to 0.28 and 0.15 to 0.46 respectively. When it comes to explain these trends, we can say that many determinants are affecting international trade in the agricultural sector. The fact that the GL indices has increased significantly from time to time can be attributed to the seasonal nature of the agricultural sector, weather conditions, change in production and domestic demand. However, the overall average, which draws a more realistic picture can be explained by geographical proximity demand for certain quality standards, freight and price advantages rather than seasonal changes. I also want to mention about future research steps after these results. First step, for example, can be expanding methods of the analysis and investigating whether the grain trade between Turkey and the EU is horizontal or vertical. And also, examining the impact of government policies on intra-industrial trade in detail. And finally, analyzing Turkey's grain trade with other trade partners such as Russia, Ukraine and Kazakhstan. 
I believe that this will provide more extensive and descriptive outcomes. I want to thank you for your kind attention.